Okay, let's try this. On the left-hand side is Vocaloid 4, which has two parts, a motif and a counter motif, which part of sounds like this. And on the right-hand side is Vocaloid 5, which has three motif lines, which sound partially like this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing and Vision and Sound, Part 22, Transits I Vow. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting on a couple things. We're composing in Custom Scale 16, kind of on the fly. We have 35 chords, of which we've used maybe 12. So if we were to go ahead and flesh out the remaining chords, it would probably help us with even more ideas for composing. For example, some really fast parts. Um, we had reflected last time, and I'll say it again, that when we transition from seven quarter time to four four time, it helped us make these motifs that overlapped, but the original composing in seven four gave us timing by ear. Some of our phrases were on the beat, and some of them were off the beat. And we're also noticing that we need to take care of our gear some more. We got sticky keys and uh, the equivalent. So we continued working with Vocaloid, and in particular, we updated the headers. We tracked where one went into two, into three, four, five. And then we went into our Reaper. Remember, we were using Reaper, and we made a three stack overlay here, uh, which we're going to play for you. So the top, middle, and bottom were offset by different uh, amounts of bars compared to Vocaloid 4. Um, and we're now at a two-minute composition. And then we went ahead and put it into our animation program. So in doing that, it gave us an insight that it would be cool. Let's show you the whole thing. It would be cool to not only show the top, middle, and bottom motif, but to split out where we used piano and where we used voice. For example, and we had done that in uh, Vocaloid 3, I think. We had mixed voice in the middle and then uh, kind of bookended it with piano on the sides. But the difference here is we're using a complex fugue in all piano. But then we're also taking time out to do piano and voice together. So the fugue is three voices, literally, speaking to each other. So we decided to split out those parts on the score because we'd export, for example, the middle piano and the middle voice separately and then animate them separately in our animation program. So what we're going to do is play the animation version for you, and that'll bring us home. So here we go.
So that concludes today's stream. What we like about having done the animation is uh, it relates to, in the other series, the Carol Meredith discussions about dancing animations and colors. Um, and then also in doing the animation, it identified for us a place to change the score a little bit more because it was we were we know we continue to notice that when we watch an animation, it uh, it keeps our inter it adds to the interest of the music. It's there's a there's an interaction going on with the vision and the sound, which is our series uh, focus. Um, but sometimes we get new insights about the sound by looking while we're looking at and we're we lost interest at this one place and we say oh the sound needs to change and then we change the sound and then we double check it and show that the the vision changes so so that's that's what we noticed that's what we liked about it so our ideas for next time are to post the score in animation and share that for some comments from our associates uh, and then uh, we talked about the reference chord set uh, Flushing that now that we've added a bunch more chords in these compositions, we could go ahead and at least get them entered. And our good friend to be determined. Shout out to Methodic Improviser and Steady Worker. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do come back. Do take care. And keep on streaming.